Pitchers and catchers report soon. So let's remind ourselves that the Dodgers are loaded with pitching. The Lakers trading frenzy is regarded as pre-agency. And the Kings, are they turning their goaltending future over to a journeyman minor leaguer? Good morning, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. It is February 12th, 2023, Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. Let's eat, drink, be merry, enjoy your friends, family, and yeah, take a moment to before you get too hammered to remind yourself and to thank the Lord for the blessings that you have in your life. And if you like the content that we put out about LA Sports, click the clack the like button, click the clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell, hit that. It'll let you know we drop new content. Sharing's caring, let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Even though the LA teams aren't in the Super Bowl, what the hell, let me know. Before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. Did you like the new look LA Lakers? Granted, no Steph Curry for the Warriors, but no LeBron James for LA. Dennis Schrader scores 26 points to lead the Lakers to a 109-103 victory over Golden State. Seventh ranked UCLA, 70, Oregon, 23. The Bruins took care of business. Jaime Jaquez Junior scores 25. Oregon State, 61, USC, 58. Vinci Wachapu scores a career high 19 points, but there's no getting around it. This is a disastrous weekend for the Trojans basketball team. Kings, six, Pittsburgh, zero. Adrian Kempe scores four times to lead the Kings. Meanwhile, today, None. I guess it's that Super Bowl thing, you know? A lot of stuff to talk about regarding the boys in blue. The Dodgers have signed a former all-star closer. It's a move that would have made Ned Coletti proud. Alex Reyes saves 29 of 34 chances with the Cardinals as their closer did get to the all-star game, but that was his only full season in 2021. He missed the entirety of last year after shoulder surgery. So the Dodgers pick him up on a minor league deal, the contract heavily laden with incentives. That's one thing about Dodger pitching, but the Athletics spoke with Director of Player Development, Will Rhymes, about four elite pitching prospects and how they could fit with the Dodgers this year. Now you might remember Ryan Pepio, he was a spot starter for the Dodgers last year. Rhymes called it, quote, his learning year, unquote, that uh, Pepio struggled to find the proper mechanics for a slider at times. So he should still be a spot starter this year. We'll get to why he's a spot starter in a moment. Michael Grove has three pitches and was lauded as being, quote, completely fearless. He won a lot of credibility with the guys for his willingness to take the ball and make no excuses and just come after the guys, unquote. Rhymes said Bobby Miller is, quote, obviously knocking on the door, unquote, of breaking into the majors. There are scouting reports that suggest that Miller, when he reaches his potential, could be one of the top 10 pitchers in Major League Baseball. Finally, Gavin Stone did not pitch in the majors last year, but Freddie Freeman saw him pitch in an intra-squad game just before the playoffs. Freeman is convinced Stone is going to make an impression this year. Rhymes called Stone's delivery electric. So who breaks through? You tell me. We know again that Pepio had spot starts last year, but the Dodgers rotation as it stands right now is Julio Arias, Clayton Kershaw, Tony Gonzalez, Noah Syndergaard, and Dustin May. Provided all, provided Kershaw's healthy, provided Gonzalez's healthy, Provided Syndergaard returns to the status that he had with the Mets. Provided Dustin May regains his control after Tommy John surgery. Where is the hole for one of these rookies to fill in? Now, I can grant you, you could see another Kershaw injury, but it's going to be a difficult rotation to break into. Do you remember when the Dodgers first flexed their financial muscles after Frank McCourt was forced out of ownership, forced to sell the team? 
It was a mega trade with the Boston Red Sox who brought LA Adrian Gonzalez, Carl Crawford, Josh Beckett. All the players involved in that trade are out of baseball now, except for one, Ruby De La Rosa. LA had sent De La Rosa over to Boston as part of that trade. He was pretty effective when he was with LA back then. Since then, he's bounced around, even pitched overseas in the Japan League. He's come full circle. He too, uh, just like Reyes, has signed a minor league deal with the Dodgers. I mentioned uh, being somewhat surprised that the Dodgers had signed outfielder David Peralta yesterday. The reasoning being, doesn't this mean that mega prospect James Outman has a one-way ticket back to the minors or to the end of the bench? What gives? Well, the Athletic lists Outman as only the Dodgers' eighth best prospect, so maybe he is not the mega prospect we were told last year. Potential star, they all agree, but he misses too many pitches when he swings. They still believe he makes the big league club. Miguel Vargas apparently is going to be the one who makes the bigger impact, him at second base. You would think a guy who escaped a single party authoritarian regime where political oppression is not allowed would know better than to go against any government. But Yasiel Puig is not that guy. I mean, I don't know. You tell me. I'd get scared poopless to get a traffic ticket if I had escaped Cuba, right? I, don't, I wouldn't want to trust any government after living in Cuba. But Puig apparently knows no fear. He was already targeted by the feds in a sports gambling probe. Now he faces additional counts by the feds of making false statements and obstructing justice. Like he was part of the Trump administration or something, right? He's facing another 10 years in the federal pen. The feds don't play, Yossiel. Granted, they might not slaughter your family like the Castro regime. Yo, sometimes you gotta learn to play your cards, says the guy to the dude in trouble with sports gambling. Lakers general manager Rob Palenka called the Lakers trades, quote, pre-agency, unquote. If you look back at who was traded away and who's coming back to the Lakers, LA sent out a lot of expiring contracts for younger players who have contract options after this year. This means if Palenka likes the core of his team or just likes a couple of players, he can keep them without too much damage to the salary cap. In other words, he was thinking like an agent, which he was before he got the GM gig over at LA. Palenka did also admit that he reached out uh, regularly to both LeBron James and Anthony Davis, by the way, before the trades. At this time, LeBron James is the only player on the Lakers roster in his 30s. Granted, he's closer to his 40s than his 20s, but he's the only player on the roster in his 30s. According to Anthony Davis, James really liked what he saw on uh, Saturday's game up in Golden State. He supposedly told Davis, quote, you know, we're going to be really good, unquote. Yes, if you watched yesterday's game, I too am aware that ABC tried to make a feel-good story of a 12-year-old girl who got courtside seats and then all of a sudden LeBron James sits next to her. The internet blew up over this girl. Oh, she's adorable. Oh, she's cute. To which I say, oh, she's 12. Stop it. You're not intentionally perving on the internet. Stop it. She just had a good seat to a basketball game. The Kings have signed goaltender Phoenix Copley to a one-year extension. That was prior to him posting that shutout yesterday against Pittsburgh. The deal is for $1.5 million. Now, it might not be an understatement to say that Copley has saved the Kings season. The problem is this. Yeah, you put a little faith in him by giving him a new contract but he is a journeyman minor league goalie. 
Nobody is confusing his save percentage with elite net mining either. The one thing he is, is 16, three and one since being called up to replace the faltering Cal Peterson. Now Copley, like Peterson and Jonathan Quick, none of them saved 90% of their shots. What does that mean? Does it mean that if the Kings had a goalie who stopped more than 90% that they'd be cup contenders? Possible? No idea. But what I can tell you is that a contract like this takes the Kings out of the goaltending market at the trade deadline. I'm very skeptical now that the Kings are going to be looking for goal goalies when the trade deadline comes around in early March. Arthur Kaliev and Trevor Moore were activated from injured reserve. Jacob Movier was recalled from the AHL affiliate down in Ontario. Now, speaking of Ontario, um, I went to see the Ontario Rain play again last night. It's my third time watching the Rain this year. I want to take a moment and compliment GM Rob Blake as to how he's handling Kings prospects. I saw my... Look, there, I'm, the more minor league hockey I see, and I don't plan on watching a ton of it, the Kings just have all these alleged uber prospects, right? The more minor league hockey that I watch, I can tell the difference between the NHL and the minors. In the NHL, the decisions have to be quick. It always has to be quick in hockey. Hockey is a game played by very fast skaters. And the people in the minor leagues can skate pretty fast too. The problem, they don't make decisions as quickly as the NHL players. It's almost as if when you watch a minor league hockey game, you can see the players thinking on the ice. And this includes these alleged elite prospects that the Kings have. It's almost as if they're asking themselves, wait, is this a good shot? Who do I pass to? The more you're thinking, the less likely you are NHL ready. It's the players who react fast. I believe that Rob Blake is, is rewarding the players who react fast with playing time. Former Clippers guard Reggie Jackson is expected to sign with Denver. Now you might recall that he, along with every other point guard in the roster last week, fell out of favor with coach Tyron Lue. Jackson was traded to Charlotte in exchange for backup center Mason Plumley. The Hornets then bought out Jackson's contract. I have to tell you though, it's all kind of strange when you look, when you take a step back and look at it. Denver traded its backup point guard to the Clippers, Bones Highland. Denver thought Highland was erratic. The Clippers thought Jackson was erratic. Do these guys know what they're looking for or not? Not just the Clippers, but Denver. No idea. The Colts have trimmed candidates for their head coaching search, but Rams defensive coordinator Raheem Morris is allegedly still in the running. By the way, two other candidates for that job are coaching in the Super Bowl today. ESPN is reporting that Eagles offensive coordinator Shane Steichen is the favorite. As a side note, Colts fans have generated an internet petition with about 4,000 signatures begging Colts management not to hire interim head coach Jeff Saturday to the full-time gig. Sparks player Katie Lou Samuelson is pregnant, and I'm just going to be completely honest with you. I have no idea what that means in terms of her career, in terms of WNBA rules. I don't know if that means she misses the entire year. I have no idea. If you're a social justice warrior who has opinions about these things, have at it. I'm just going to say the lady is pregnant. Mazel tov. Many happy returns. But you let me know what you think about uh, the Dodgers in the comments thread. Let me know what you think about the Lakers and how they looked in game one with this new roster in the comments thread. And if you enjoyed this clip, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. Even when... The Super Bowl does not include the LA teams. We are gonna talk LA sports. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.